What's happening ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Scott and welcome to a fresh new Skyrim build straight out of the Fudge Muppet Forge. One of the coolest things about this build is that it rides around Skyrim on a bear. You heard that right folks, a bear, but not just any bear, a bear covered in armor. So get rickety wrecked. She not only uses swords, but also her bare hands. She's an orc, and the mods she uses are the Immersive Weapons mod, the Immersive Armors mod, and the Tumba Jambas Mounts mod. The Immersive Weapons mod will be for your swords, which are called Orcish Sabers. And the Immersive Armors mods will of course be for your full set of armor, which is known as Dragon Bone Ebon Steel Armor. You're going to be choosing the Horned Veiled variant for the helmet. Tumbajama's Mounts mod will be used to ride your bear, and while it appears to be conjured, you're going to have to roleplay that you just call it from the mountains and leave it outside cities. This mod is really fun. Oh, and don't go in the water unless you want your immersion seriously ruined. Finally, you're going to have the Ordinator Perk Overhaul. The skills you'll be using are Heavy Armor, One-Handed, and Smithing, all of which will have heavy perk investment. With one-handed, you're going to want the entire tree that gives you all the powers for sprinting attacks and decapitation, and you're also going to want the entire sword tree and the entire dual wielding tree. With smithing, you're going to want all of the heavy armor perks up to dragon bone, and I'd recommend getting all of the other perks except for counterfeit and the light armor perks. For the smithing specialization perk, you're going to want to pick heavy armor, though you can choose one-handed if you would prefer. And finally, with heavy armor, you're going to want to have every single perk, including the unarmed perks, as this character will often use her fists. Remember that this perk tree does have the menace ability, meaning that enemies have a chance to run away from you in fear if you walk straight at them in a full set of heavy armor. A perk link for a non-ordinator overhaul character and the links to all of the mods being used can be found in the description. The Beast Rider originates from the Dragon Tail Mountains of Craglorn and was raised in a small and little known society of the Iron Orcs. Iron Orc culture is much more savage and barbaric than traditional Orc culture, and the Beast Rider of course spoke the native Iron Orc tongue. This is a completely different Orc language that most Orsama will never hear in their lifetime. The Beast Rider was taught ways of the Warrior and the Blacksmith, two skill sets the Iron Orcs excelled at. Iron, however, was the only metal that the Beast Rider ever really worked with. Iron Orcs also have mastered taming creatures such as Trolls and Welwars to use as war beasts, and the Beast Rider was therefore educated on how to domesticate wild animals. However, when the Beast Rider had reached her 20th year of living, her tribe of Iron Orcs fell prey to a plague. Disease had made its way into the Iron Orcs territory, however, the chief of the tribe refused to leave. He was adamant that this was Iron Orc land and nothing could defeat them and make them move. The worried mother of the Beast Rider, however, encouraged her daughter to leave in secrecy. She told her to go and have a brand new life instead of staying with the stubborn traditional orcs and dying away. The Beast Rider left during the night, avoiding the fate of death that the rest of the tribe would inevitably face. She headed in the direction of Cyrodiil, and after a few weeks of wandering, she would end up in the city of Bruma. Upon arriving, she could hardly speak any common tongue. She decided to head to the local tavern so that she could barter for some food. The Nords, however, were not too happy to see the Beast Rider, and as she struggled to communicate with them, they hassled her out of the building. One old Nord, however, was a blacksmith, and he decided to make use of the Orc Woman. His income was dependent on him making armor and weapons, but he had recently broken his arm from an unexpected fall. With his knowledge of Orc smithing talents, the Nord offered a woman a place to stay, but in return she would have to help him run his forge. The Beast Rider, with no resources or knowledge of the land she was in, agreed and ended up staying with the Nord for five years. Over time, he taught her how to fluently speak the common language, and the two were able to learn much about each other's past. The Beast Rider excelled at making weapons, many of which would be used by the city guard. Eventually, word of civil war escalating in Skyrim became the topic talk of the town, and the old Nord decided it would be great for his business if he traveled there to make a gear for the armies. He was originally from Skyrim and decided to return for business and the desire to live the rest of his days in his homeland. The Beast Rider had now mostly assimilated to her new lifestyle and culture and headed with the old man to Skyrim, but was caught on a skirmish on the border. The two were outnumbered and confused and it was here that the old Nord had his final breath. 
The Beast Rider was captured and taken to Helgen where she later escapes and heads to Whiterun. You will have to roleplay that on her way she ends up in a battle with a mighty bear. This bear was the fastest and hardiest that she had ever seen, and after fighting with it for an hour, she decided to try another tactic. She brought herself back to the methods of the Iron Orcs and slowly turns the bear from foe to friend. She admired the spirit of Bear and the two will develop a close connection as you play through the game. Now, with the Toomba Jabba's Mounts mod, you will need to travel to the area outside Whiterun near the stables and find a flute in a chest which can be used to summon this bear. You will also be role-playing that the Beast Rider uses a forge to create armor for the bear and over time learns to ride it. The Beast Rider will then discover she is Dragonborn and strive to fulfill her newfound destiny. Now the playstyle for the Beast Rider is very straightforward, especially if you have some horseback experience. Winning fights on mounts is pretty easy after you've played a few hours, but it will require some getting used to. After you've mastered mounted combat with the bear, you'll want to use your animal friend to rush into the midst of combat and slash enemies either side of you. After you've killed all the enemies, you can continue on to the next area, or if there are enemies you cannot reach with your bear, you may have to dismount, utilizing both sprinting and stationary power attacks to dish out the most damage. Of course, after exhausting all of your stamina, you will have to resort to singular strikes. However, most enemies should be dead before that. Alternatively, because the Beast Rider loves to use her fists, she will even sometimes not use her sabers. She will instead fight enemies with her gauntlets, which is not only intimidating, but it's also very effective and a viable playstyle for the build. This is because of the perks in the heavy armor tree that will significantly increase your unarmed damage. The stat spread for the Beast Rider is 80% health and 20% stamina. 80% health will make the Beast Rider one tough opponent and ensure that you can confidently take on multiple enemies. 20% stamina will be plenty for sprinting and power attacks, and remember you won't need any more of that because your bear will be doing most of the speedy movement for you. The standing stone for the Beast Rider is of course the sturdy Lord Stone for 50 more points of armor rating and a 25% resistance to magic. This just makes the Beast Rider even harder to kill and tends to fit better than any other standing stone available. And that wraps up this week's Skyrim build, the Beast Rider. So thank you for tuning in and we hope you enjoyed Enjoy this video as much as we enjoyed making it. If you want to see more Skyrim builds with fun mods, then make sure to click the subscribe button. By subscribing, you're also going to be getting Fallout 4 builds, large amounts of other Fallout 4 content, and of course, Elder Scrolls 6 discussions. I look forward to seeing all of you again soon, and until then, have an awesome week.